This one today, I'll actually say, is quite a big part up here. And the reason for that being, as you come up to the first part of what effectively is between 46K and 53K, I think if my math is correct, what is that, 7K or so? Seven to eight? But the first part of it, as we come up to it, it just kind of kicks straight up in front of you. And your natural reaction, if you haven't seen it, you haven't uh, driven the highway, ridden the highway, is to go, oh geez, okay. <laughs> that looks intimidating. So we're just gonna go through the actual breaking down of those two hills, which are coming, what I call the second part of our focus for the ride up the Sea to Sky. And just give you something to think about, how to approach it, how to break it down as we go into it. We don't think of it as 8K. We think of it in little pieces, and we're gonna go through the little pieces today. So most of you, I think, were here two days ago when we wrote our Taylor Way piece. If you weren't, no matter. Other than, I'm just gonna revisit the efforts concept just before we get into the structured part of our warm up, starting in a minute and a half. Okay? So, perceived effort, if you have numbers on your bike, if you train by wattage, which is what our base is, is on, um, you know your numbers, hopefully. If you've never actually worked through your numbers to understand them, that's something that is worthwhile doing. <clears throat> and a couple of key numbers when we're doing our efforts. Important to understand your 60%, 70%, 80%, and then we all know about over 85%. It's just really, really hard because you're getting a 9 and 10 out of 10. <clears throat> so starting out, we're going to move into our warm-up, coming up from wherever you are right now, at your preferred cadence, but I'm saying my preference is you're between 90 and 105. So it's a pretty big range. We're feeling out what you guys are most efficient at, more tools in your tool bag, you will use your range and learn how to apply it. Right now, I am sitting at just under 100, so you know. If you don't have a cadence meter, that would be 24, 25 pedal strokes in 15 seconds. Useful to count if you don't have a cadence meter or just follow my legs. So let's move into that five out of 10, 50% of your max aerobic power. Your 100% is not that six second sprint, 10 second sprint. It's what you can do after a long buildup. You'll probably only have 30 seconds, a minute and a half there that you're capable of, but that would be the very top end of this. So 50% of that, all right? Using your gear, holding your cadence. We're gonna do one minute. Just at that 50% number, or five out of 10 perceived effort. Bring that gear up. It's still easy. And as I say, effective training, <clears throat> you wanna focus on learning easy and learning hard. There's a lot of kinda sorta in the middle average that people get stuck on. Okay, we're staying here for just over another 30 seconds. And while we're doing that, relax face. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Shoulders, elbows are soft, hands are light. Five out of 10. And then we're gonna bring that up to six out of 10 in five seconds. So that's just using your gear, holding your cadence. And six out of 10, two, one, bring it up. You'll feel just a little bit more warmth. What happens here is it gets harder to put words together in a sentence. You can. <clears throat> I'm really good at this hypoxic training now 
because I do this a lot. <laughs> but the idea is if you were on a group ride, this would be where you kind of, you're talking to your buddy, talking to that person beside you, but you can feel just a little catch. <clears throat> Hold on to the cadence though. So. All right? Nice and relaxed. When we're warming up, which is super important, and I'll suggest that you find a way to warm up before the Grand Fondo, I always ride over from the North Shore, give myself a little kick in the pants, and uh, then when you end up standing waiting for the start, your muscles have already had the uh, rude awakening introduced. And that's really important for feeling better as you roll into it. I'm gonna give you a seven out of 10 to move up to. So we're gently bringing some load in here. Same cadence. Bring the gear up. If you know your wattage number, we're getting in and around our power number. Meaning, if you were to do 70 to 75% of your wattage capability, or your effort out of 10, for one hour, it's kind of all you can do. As soon as we drop it, or bring it up, move it around, then you're adjusting the amount of time you can do that. Which is why we can use our power during an event like the Grand Fondo. We're not there the whole time, obviously. If you can ride to Whistler in an hour, you don't need me. <laughs> Okay, we're holding on right here. This is where if your buddy says, how you doing? You're probably going, yeah, pretty good. Short, fast answers. Not feeling like you're conversational. And then as we move into it a little bit longer, we get what I call comfortably uncomfortable. Learn it. We get to focus on the uncomfortable eventually. Okay, I'm gonna keep you here for another 30 seconds, and then we're just gonna touch on that nasty lactate threshold level. And that's where we get into about eight out of 10. Be honest with yourself. It's something you can only do for probably around 15, 20 minutes. Not reading a magazine on the bike at the gym when we're doing this. Sweating buckets. <clears throat> okay, bring it up to that eight out of 10. I'm not gonna have you here too long, but you need to feel it. First time today. Up, up, hold the cadence. Wattage number, depending on your size, your ability. <clears throat> It's not something you're comparing to other people other than your power to weight ratio. Watts per kilogram. Me, not huge. I don't need a huge amount of watts to move myself fast. <clears throat> Good. Hold on to it. Now you really are at snippets of sentences. If even, give me another 20 seconds here. Holding on to it. Come on, guys. Ten. Five. Three. Two. And back it off. Okay? Let's go back to anywhere under 50%. Just for a minute. <clears throat> and then we're going to stay there. I had a question after Tuesday about pedal stroke. We're gonna do two things now that are designed not just to improve your RPM, as in the first one, but also, and that is revolutions per minute, right? RPM, had someone ask me that as well. But. RPM, yes, 
We want to improve our range. We want to understand it. At the various effort levels, it will feel different. Low RPM in a big gear is very, uh, it's a big recruitment of your strength, muscular engagement, less up here. You do the same output at a high cadence, particularly as you get into your uncomfortable range, then you'll really feel it like a hard cardiovascular effort. So important to understand that. The reason we don't want to ride in a low cadence all the time is because muscularly, we're just going to kill ourselves. So I'll talk a little bit about today still being in the first half of the event, and the second half is a lot of matches compared to the first half, okay? So right now, everyone's in an easy gear. This is the first part of our pedal stroke slash RPM training. I want you under your 5%, sorry, 50%, five out of 10. I want you to bring it up to 100 cadence. Hopefully all of you are not too uncomfortable at that. I can see a couple of people pedaling more slowly than that right now. I want everyone to wind it up a little bit. 100 is 25 pedal strokes every 15 seconds. What I'm gonna do for two minutes, I'm gonna keep increasing the rate of your cadence by about five each time. Don't sweat the little increments, but suffice to say, a pedal stroke every 15 seconds is the increase. All right, so from 100, right now, if you're on a bike, make sure you're in your small chain ring, easy gear. If you're on any indoor training, trainer, same thing. Starting out with the gear resistance low, make sure you can just feel the perimeter of that circle. All right, another 30 seconds. See how good you are at these lower cadences. See how good you are at holding on to it and getting that metronome going. All right, 100 cadence. Keep the gear low. Next one is important. Most of you should be able to manage it. It's at the top end of our optimal range, 105 or about, up, up. Squeeze into the pedals. Get used to that. New riders tend to jump on it, back off hard, jump on it. What you wanna learn to do is ease into things. It's good bike management. You'll change your gears better and not have nasty surprises. You also don't lose real estate the same way with the sudden changes. Good. 105, right here. This is still relatively comfortable for everyone. <clears throat> Back to that pedal stroke thing, overreaching, which is when we're getting over this is what also helps to smooth your pedal stroke out. Get those shoulders down, give them a shake. Yeah, I saw that, Neil. Okay, we're gonna bring it up to 110. In two, one, give it your best. Make sure the gear isn't too high. Neutral foot position. We're envisioning our cranks are getting a little shorter. Wish they would, right? And don't underestimate, this is a solid, stable base for your pedal stroke. As soon as you're wobbling all over the place, then you're not gonna get what you want, okay? 110, oh, I got a little excited, sorry. Slightly over that. Hold on to it. Somewhere around here, everybody spikes a bit. This is cleaning up your pedal stroke, teaching you a couple of RPM. On the next one, if you start to bounce, back, back off to where you have control. And remember, think of this, solid. Draw yourself in, all right? 115, two, one, up, up. Come on, guys. 
cleaning it up. I will never ask you to ride around outside at this cadence, but you want to learn it. Chris Fruman. Lance Armstrong came back and did this for a while too. Don't try and copy them. Just learn a little bit. All right, last little bit. Give me another 15. Hold on to it. Come on guys, quick feet, quick feet. Coming up to our last five. Two, one, let it go. Easy, easy. Have a lot of uh, track influence in our workout. And just so you understand, power is generated by a combination of force and velocity. Velocity is that, leg speed. Force is your gear. And so you wanna work up and down the range on isolating the velocity sometimes, the force other times, and learning to work with that. As you learn more velocity, you apply that to the same gear you had the capability of before, and magic. More power, go faster. All right, one last thing we're gonna do. Pedal stroke, remember? Everybody, little bit of gear so that you're still under five out of 10, but you can feel the perimeter of the pedal stroke without it being too hard. We're gonna do everybody's favorite right here, a quick little single leg, okay? We're gonna do 30 seconds, it's not too taxing. You're gonna do either side. Do not over gear in this. You'll feel like you want to, to be able to connect with the pedal the whole way around in the beginning, but you will quickly fatigue, all right? We're gonna unclip either side, don't care which. Two, one, there you go. I'm over geared, I can feel it right away. All right, when we're here, the parts of you that I can see on the screen should not change a lot. Meaning your head is level, your shoulders are down, your pistons are just turning around. I can't see if anybody has their foot on their bike. You shouldn't. That biomechanically changes it, okay? And knee driving up, let your ankle move, pulling back into the back, into the back of your pedal stroke. Those of you who have ridden a long time, try taking your opposite hand off the handlebars <laughs> and try and stay straight. We're not falling in to this, okay? Bring it back, good job. Three, two, one, clip back in. Couple symmetrical pedal strokes and we'll do the same thing. So for those of you that this is very new to, just keep your hands on the handlebars, drive the knee up, pulling around the bottom, up around the back. For those of you who have done a lot of riding, we're gonna work on checking our core, just like we did there. All right, unclip the other side. All right, what's the feeling again? Knee driving up, power stroke down, relatively easy, it's gravity. Pulling back, I feel like I'm bringing my heel into the back of the pedal stroke first. As we fatigue, here we go, come on guys. As we fatigue, think up, 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 up. Good job guys, try not to lean. Try and stay centered. Awesome job, a little bit longer. <laughs> I see you Pierre, good job. A Little bit longer, awesome job. There's some good cores in there. If you're on rollers, practice this at home with lots of space around you. In two, one, and let's go back to symmetrical. Good job, everyone. These are things you can work on on your own time. Used to be in the old days, if you could ride with one pedal for a long time, didn't have a cell phone, got stuck out in the valley after a three hour ride, your crank broke up, you can make your way home. And now we just call for help. Okay. Couple easy minutes, and what we're doing, a 17 minute piece, all right? After you've done that hard little pitchy Taylor way, 
out of the park, the neutral car is gone, off you go. After we've gotten through all of that on the highway, you have a relatively nice rolling. If you're with people, you can even look at the scenery, although always with one eye on the bikes and the cones and everything else. But you can enjoy that. And my goal is always in this part, I want it to be as easy as I can make it, which means don't over gear for any unnecessary reason. Um, try and relax as much as I can, okay? Then you come around a corner after a place called Porto Cove, you roll down a hill, and then you're into two big hills, both of them around 2K with a downhill in the middle. So that's what we're doing. We're breaking it into pieces. I'm going to cue you through the two hills. Yes, there's a break in the middle. Yes, there's a downhill. But you have to focus on getting over the first hill to be able to relax, stay with those friends that you rode out of Taylor Way with, OK? And regroup and get yourself together for the second hill up to a place called Murin. After that, you're more or less downhill to Squamish. And then we have all that to worry about in other weeks, OK? So everybody, get your composure right now. The first minute is rolling into the bottom of the hill. So everybody right now, that preferred cadence, you played around with it, 90 to 100 is where I want you, and then bring some gear in. We're going into this with our friends, few people around, at a seven out of 10, 70% hour, hour power. In 30 seconds, we're going to kick into this first part of the hill. Everyone grab a little bit of water. Okay. Make sure you've got that gear up. <clears throat> what happens as you come into this hill, it goes straight up in front of you. All right? So the first part, we're focusing 30 seconds at a time. The first part is 4 to 5%. So we know what that's like. <clears throat> Not super steep, but because you see so much of it, it looks really daunting. So let's just bring it right now at a 90 cadence up to between 70 and 80. We're hitting the base in 15 seconds now. Sorry, I gave you an extra little bit. Rolling at 70 in 10. I'll cue you each little piece. We've got two minutes, 90 cadence, 70 to 80 percent, bottom of the hill, and here we go. Come on, guys. Crank those tunes. If you're on about song eight of my playlist. Hopefully, you found that. Hey, what does this look like? We carried good momentum into the hill, off that downhill. We were ready for it. We're in our small chain ring, if we weren't already on my cue. <clears throat> we're not getting botched up by anyone who messes up their gears. We're in control. This is out of our comfortable, <clears throat> but we're in control. Can do this, all right? Good job, you're almost at a minute. Get into your breathing, get into your rhythm. Seven to eight. One more minute, and that's gonna change. One more minute. It kicks up to about eight to nine percent. <clears throat> that is steep. Not the steepest on the whole road, <clears throat> but getting there. Come on, guys, you just thought about that pedal stroke? Single leg. Anytime an effort starts to hurt, come down to the basics. <clears throat> come down to what your feet are doing. Is your core engaged? Relax your shoulders. This is a nasty kick up coming now. 
Row gets deeper. Cadence is going to drop to a climbing cadence of 80. And the effort is threshold 80 to 85. Two, one, come on now. Middle of this hill. More strength required. Steeper pitch. Come on guys, pull through. Really strong. On the bottom of that pedal stroke, use that whole extra 20% you can get to. 30 seconds done. Come on, bite-sized pieces. Always look ahead. If you're a heavy breather like me, just use it as your rhythm. Don't matter. I know I look like I'm smiling sometimes, but it's more of a grimace. <laughs> okay, one more minute here. Come on guys, use your ankles. Get those pedals around. And this is the hardest part of this Furry Creek Hill. Important to stay engaged right here. Awesome job, come on. 30 more seconds. And shut up legs. Everyone's legs hurt, which is why when we stand in the next minute, we're just gonna swallow our pride and get her done. Three, two, get on top of it. Come on. Changing the muscle groups. Not recovery. Don't lock those elbows. Come on, guys. A little bit of liveliness on those pedals. Look where you want to go. 30 more seconds. Come on, guys. You got it. If you're flailing, sit, regroup, come back. 15 seconds. When you sit down, take the bike with you. Tuck it underneath you, there we go. All right, it's way down to two to 3% now, but you need to push over the top. 75%, come on. 90-ish cadence, drive it. Stay with your posse. Come on, it'll pay off. 10. Last five, come on. Over the crest, there's the crest. Two, one, downhill. All right, easy gear. You're with your group. Use your cadence. You got two minutes. So what happens? First of all, recover, recover. All right? Not sitting up, not having a Cuban. Okay, what happens with a lot of people who have never ridden that pitch, you see it flatten out, you know this downhill, 
natural reaction is to let up either just before the crest as you're going to the crest even worse 100 meters before the crest you lose so much by not using that sweet spot all right so you guys all stayed on the game for that 45 seconds we're going to be at the bottom we're going to ride through the little mount mining town which is flat we're going to bring a little effort in again make sure we're ready for the second peach ha pitch have a drink all right having a nice safe descent into Britannia you can look at this on the map profile goes like this and we're here and it's gonna go like that again all right <clears throat> getting ready on the flat two minutes now back to your 50 to 60 back to closer to a 90 cadence okay you don't want to go into this hill from nothing from this kind of effort bring it back get yourself composed second hill out of Britannia mining town starts steep so you go into it this time at a 8% steep getting close to the end of our first minute lock yourself into that rhythm five six out of ten is active recovery remember you can maybe put words together again now coming off that effort which is coming in one minute five minutes on the gas again getting ready I'm still riding closer to 100 than 90 I tend to feel more efficient there you can follow my leg speed if that's working for you in these pieces <clears throat> but don't try and copy someone's leg speed <clears throat> if you feel you haven't grown to be able to handle it properly okay 15 seconds we're hitting the, the pitch we're hitting it hard start bringing your cadence down eight zero bring your effort up your gear up your wattage 80 to 85 two one come on guys make it count use those circles come on strong committed this steep pitch will be over in 90 seconds come on guys feel that power transfer to your pedals focus on that for a while count if you want use the energy of everyone around you come on guys ankles move pulling into the back of that pedal stroke you got this one minute and we get a change up come on eyes up eyes up come on guys you got this relax your face relax your shoulders we're heading for that little part where the road's dropping to about five percent the drop will feel good stay with it now 15 seconds 
Come on, guys, it's still gonna be hard. 5%. Dropping the gear a little bit so you can bring your cadence up. 90 to 95. 7 to 8 out of 10. Three minutes, come on. Come on, get it. Change up in cadence. Recover, recover. Come on, we're on that middle part. Eating it up, because we get to use more leg speed now. Come on, guys. Think you can, think you can. On, use those visuals. I am strong today. Yeah, my legs hurt. So do everybody's. Hey, I'm almost in Squamish. Awesome job, guys. Stay with it. Almost halfway through this piece. Come on, give it an honest effort. Own the bike, you're the boss. 90 seconds, guys. Taking it away now. If you're over geared, give yourself a little bit, gear off. Compensate with cadence. All right, guys. A little bit over a minute like this. You can see around the corner. You know the crust is less than two minutes. Come on, push, push. Embrace the suffer a little bit. Come on, you picked a good group of friends. Everybody's motivated. Everybody wants to get to Squamish in good form. Awesome job, guys. We're almost on that one to two percent, but it's not the top. We've got to wind up over it. Where you're gonna let some gear go. You're gonna use your cadence. Bring a little gear off. Two, one, one minute to go. Come on. 60 seconds. Commit to this. Right till we see the road tip down. Come on. Push, push. Sink into it. Come on, guys, you dribbled off the back just a little bit. Pick it back up. Less than 30. Use your leg speed. Up, up, up. Come on. Take it right over to the downhill. 15. Good job, everyone. So, a look at the profile. Right now, if we were on the downhill, we probably went a little harder than we would, but this is training for any scenario. So, recover. Recover, and after this next downhill, you are within 500 meters of Squamish. One little popper in there, 
that you might say, huh, Leslie didn't say this was here, but there's a few of those, okay? But the general concept is you're there in good shape. All right, couple more minutes. Easy pedaling, regrouping. As there were two big hills there, we're just doing that for the first part. We have a lot of systems in biking that we need to work on. I know coming into this as a runner, I was horrified that people did all this fast, slow, fast, slow. Like, guys are wasting so much energy, what's going on? But you have to learn it, right? There's a lot of different systems that we use. <clears throat> and we do use a lot of explosive top end power, which enables us to do those little pushes as we get into the hard parts of any ride. And even if it's just riding with your buddies, you know, you got a bat, lunch bat, whatever it is, these are all things you'll use and not just on the road bike, mountain bike, gravel bike, anything, right? So right now, we're just having a little bit more chill. Do stand up if you need to. Some of you have not ridden an indoor bike a lot, so you need to be moving around a little bit more. Perfect. Stand up. Don't feel like you're locked into it. Your back will appreciate it. Now we're just gonna do a couple of efforts that are real hard, explosive biking efforts. <clears throat> so unlike that long sustained piece, we're gonna do two really hard efforts and we're taking even recovery basically between them, okay? When you're doing quality, you do need to take proper recovery. If you're like, oh, I won't burn enough calories or whatever, <clears throat> forget all that. That doesn't make you a better biker. <clears throat> when you're going hard, you need to really, like this, easy, easy, so you can do the hard, okay? So we're gonna do two and a half minutes and it's gonna look like this. You're gonna go into it 30 seconds at your 10, 10 out of 10 putting yourself into big distress. And then, training stress, not distress. And then, for one, one and a half minutes, you'll ride at that hour power number, and then you'll finish coming out of it with another 30 seconds hard, okay? This teaches your body to be able to go hard, bring it back a little bit, recover at that hour power, like I said, and then be able to finish, because inevitably, whether you're doing the Fondo in six or five or four or three hours, everybody smells the barn and everybody's going hard at the end, okay? So we're gonna do this starting in 30 seconds. Start finding, this is all your preferred cadence. I prefer you over 90, for sure. If you're comfortable over 100, that's fine. We're going in 30 sec 20 seconds. The songs for this are down to song 15. Gold Guns Girls, like Boom, Couple of good ones to get you fired up. All right, more gear. We're gonna hit that big number in 10, less than 10 seconds. More gear, more gear. Remember you need turnover as well. In two, one, come on, 30 seconds. Hard, hard, hard. I'm building to it. <clears throat> Try not to blow yourself up. Still in control. Halfway. Awesome job, guys. Come on, stay with it. Ten. Five. Two. One. Seventy percent. Come on. Get it. This is the hardest part. Finding this piece. Head up. Recover. Recover. to this. One more minute like this. Play with your leg speed. Don't get bogged down. Awesome. Don't lock those elbows. I see some of this. Relax. Relax. 
So good, you guys. Come on. 30 more seconds like this. All you need to do, keep the same pressure on the pedals. All right. Same pressure. exercises that help that think you can and you may never feel from going hard like you want to go harder but what if there is that bet or what if there is that little ego thing with someone or what if maybe there's a jersey on the line if you're doing the RBC Grand Fondo worlds are basically, it can be anything. It can be just because you want to show yourself you can. But this is a real think you can thing. And believe me, most racing cyclists, the end of any event, everyone feels the same. Everybody's a bit spent. You want to learn to hold on to your matches, have some left for the end. You want to learn how to distribute them. And that's part of training is you get, sometimes you get to finish with some left and you go, darn, I could have gone harder. Sometimes you're coming up into the last two kilometers, you're like, oh, I wish I saved some matches. So you want to learn, you want to recognize it before it's all happening. Okay, we're going again. Big gear, big gear. More gear, and two and a half minutes, same as before. 30 seconds, two, one, up, 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 come on. Come on, don't cheat yourself. Locomotive, locomotive. Halfway. Come on, guys. Last hard thing we're doing today. Switching to 70%, two, one. Come on, 90 seconds. Find it, sweet spot. Good cadence. Don't get yourself bogged down. 30 seconds done. Almost. There's 30. Awesome, guys. Come on. Eyes up. Close to a minute. Come on, Donna. 20 this year. Thirty seconds like this. Stay with it. All right. 
10, and you're riding out of it. <clears throat> Get ready. This is for that final. Push to the line. Two, one. Come on, guys. Up, up. is right where I am. I want you to be relaxed on the bike. Okay? So we brought it right back from basically sitting up to now back to that 50-60. <clears throat> Easy gear. And I'm just gonna do a quick little cadence up and down. I want you changing the gear to keep it easy in terms of push against your legs. Might not feel easy as we increase the cadence. I'm gonna say up, up. You're gonna bring it up about five RPM <coughs> on a regular bike or anything that, um, the power increases with the cadence. <clears throat> I want you <clears throat> to be backing the gear off. All right? So, 100 cadence right now. Up, up. <clears throat> Come on, guys, stay engaged. Just a couple more minutes. This will move that lactic acid around a little better because those hard efforts really, sorry, not lactic acid, lactate, they really build that tight feeling in your legs. You want to try and flush it out. And up, up, 105-ish. <clears throat> Good, head up. Try not to hang your head down. <laughs> <That's> pra <laughs> we practice our habits inside for out. And really good habit is eyes on what you're doing. Let's bring it up, up one more time. If you can, back that gear off so it's not too hard. 110. I was asked about pedal stroke. It'll come with time pedaling your bike. The drills will help. This, when you're tired, is super valuable. Get those circles in. One more lift if you can. Up, up. Over 110. Just for a little blip here. If you can't comfortably, <clears throat> stay at 110. Last 10 seconds here, and we're gonna start bringing it down. 
Good job, guys. Back down to 110. Back down to 105. Back in a normal range now. 105. Breathe in, breathe out. You want this to be subconscious. Just, you get on the bike, your legs have a nice nippy turnover. You don't have to force it. 100, bring it down. Relaxed elbows. Good job. <laughs> and making sure the gear is easy. Bring it all the way down to that 90 to 100, wherever you're the most comfortable. I'm still pedaling because this is another exercise and way to fast track your ability. Back the gear off a bit more. Okay? So bring it down so you're all the way down to two, three out of ten. Two, three out of ten but you're still turning those pedals in a nice crisp break. Okay? And I'll learn to do that. <clears throat> That's for anyone who is on rollers. You can back off all the resistance and just do your easy days there. Super good. Okay. Those of you who are pretty much sick to death of pedaling, you can stop now if you want. Everyone else, back the gear right off. We're right at seven. 59 on the west coast here. Pierre's getting ready for his lunch. Maybe some of the rest of you are. <laughs> okay. And just remember, um, just going to stretch a little bit. That's a wrap for the workout for today.